you Jump, 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 jump What we done started Look at what we done started This the people party This is what we done started Peace and love, party people. It's Talib Kweli, the MCEO, the BKMC. I am the host of the world's best podcast, The People's Party. And as always and as usual, we have our lovely and talented and thought-provoking and sometimes uh, hilarious <laughs> Jasmine Lee <laughs> in the place to be. What's going on? How you feeling, Jasmine? I'm, I'm feeling like it's a little shady over here, Talib. I'm feeling the shade that you're throwing. Well, I, I miss I didn't you. Want Come to be, back. I miss you, too. I didn't want to be dismissive and say... You know, I always say you're funny and hilarious, but you're so much more than than funny and hilarious. So I wanted to add more more things than just you're not just here for the jokes. So that's why I that's take why back I paused. The shade then. Okay, all good, all good. <laughs> now to, I'm gonna jump right into it um, because today's guest, as evidence from the last time we had this guest on, is not a man who is here to hear his accolades and for people to be fawning over him and all this and all that. He is just an all-around swell guy and he is my partner in black star and my partner in uh midnight miracle along with dave Chappelle, and one of my favorite human beings and one of my favorite artists uh give it up for yasin bay and a place to be what's up yasin what's good Tyler? thank you that's very that's very kind of you brother thank you all good all good it's a pleasure, a pleasure to be here thank you for for making all of this happen it's, it's been it's been it been a bit a bit of a process um you know summertime Long days are actually long days. <laughs> longer days are longer <laughs> right. days. So yes, yes, um, yes. Are you transmitting live uh, from a country called Earth? Uh, from a country called Earth. Uh, at, at, from my from my dear friend, as you can see, Anwar Khalifi's studio. Yes. Uh, here in wonderful Catalonia. Yes, we so, see that uh, Alfalfa made a return. Alfalfa is yes. Alfalfa is is you know a near and dear, and it's, it's some of the other works here. So Anwar was kind enough to let us use the space. I wish you guys could see more of it, but yeah, this is a you know some interesting visuals from who I think was one of the more important artists of our of our time and of 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 all time actually. To be honest, it's certainly yeah. one of my favorites. So happy to yeah. be here with him. Um, now we are on the other side of the Black Star release on Luminary, No Fear of Time, and you had called me last week and said you wanted to discuss with us here on the People's Party some things about that record. But before we do that, I just want to share with the audience that more than any other artist I've ever known or worked with. Uh, you have taught me the value of knowing my worth and you have refused to have your work and creativity cheapened by the industries that we take part in. Um, and I want to thank you for that and ask you how at such a young age, because you've been on this since we was very, very young men, how you were able to understand and determine your worth when so many people struggle with that. I, I guess it's just instinct for me. I mean, I, I, my father was definitely uh, my parents were, were 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 key in that. My father specifically mm -hmm. was very uh, very keen on like you know, Gene Big. You know, don't don't play yourself cheap type yeah. of type of attitude and approach. Um, but it's, uh, it's also instinct too. It's just like a, a, a sense, you know, that like there's 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 more to this than than uh is being offered or yeah dave dave says something that was interesting recently in his in his latest uh release for netflix um mm -hmm. in his um acceptance uh his speech to the ellington school where he said art is a powerful commodity mm -hmm. and he uh he said but and any real artist should not treat themselves like a commodity Yes. And the example that he used that he was uh he was in a hotel in Panama and saw a portrait of Abraham Lincoln mm -hmm. that that was made of all pennies. He asked the uh one of the workers at the hotel said how much is this painting? And it said $600,000. When he looked at the pennies, he right. you know, he calculated, he said this is about $300 worth of pennies. Mm -hmm. So he if it, 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 uh, he said that made a light bulb go off and it said like art is a powerful it's a very powerful commodity which it is yes. and at the same time that the um i think the the wise thing to do for real artists and i i, I want to use that term without being you know kind of condescending condescending or, or judgy so mm -hmm. to speak but uh i think there is a a a a, a defined line between art and entertainment i don't think that I think that art can have entertainment value, um, but I think the things that are just trying to entertain 
uh, just solely for the purpose of entertainment are different than what you might, what could be considered art. I think that the entertainment products don't age as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As, 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 uh, as real art, uh, or art made for another purpose besides just being entertaining. Would you say that art you make for yourself and entertainment you make for others? Well, I think that things you can do, f you can have a balance where you're making things that, you know, that everybody that's making a work of art has their own needs and their own impulses that they're, yeah. that they're cr creating it from. And I think that that's not an isolating thing. I think that that's something that if you find beauty in it, then there's a corresponding point for your point of view and then so on and so on. So I don't think that's an isolating thing. Uh, I think that anybody or anything that's trying to be all things to all people will never succeed in yeah. doing that. Um, even if, and, and I think I don't think that having the largest audience is necessarily means that it's the best, so to speak. And I think that in terms of you know how people judge or experience art, that's a subjective experience anyway. You know, this okay. notion that we that we've been we've been put in we're in this space. Uh, that we were all born into called this entertainment industry that puts uh, other other works of even entertainment in context with one another based on their um you know their popularity mm -hmm. uh in, in many instances and popularity is really just an indicator of just that popularity it's not necessarily an indicator of value or right. Um, or any or anything else, and there are things that are, that are, that were popular ten or fifteen or twenty years ago that very few people will actually remember, and then there are things that are not popular in their day that yeah. you know stand stand the test of time. Right. I think anybody will want to stand the test of time. You know, if you if you do something, you wanted to. I mean, at least I do. I mean, yeah. and I was, and I'm I'm not alone in that. That was that was my whole thing about wanting to create art anyway is that I wanted it to be something that would that would last as Time. as yeah, that would, you know that would age well. Yeah. So to speak. Well, it was your idea to name our recent album No Fear of Time. And you brought up Dave earlier and um Dave has been very good at, you know, Dave famously, when you talk about popularity versus maybe finding your specific audience. Dave was the most popular comedian in the world. He had the most popular TV show in the world. They sold a million DVDs in one day of the Chappelle show. It had never happened before. And then right as it happened, he left the bag on the table. He left it on the table. He went back and found himself as an artist, got back on the road, started doing more shows than anybody. And I want to say congratulations to Dave because The Closer just got two Emmy nominations. And I know we're not here for awards or accolades, but I feel like that's important to note because of how mm -hmm. unpopular that special was in the mainstream media. Well, I mean, one, kudos to Dave for so many reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, Last time I saw you was at Hollywood Bowl when, you know, some things happened with Dave. Yeah, but kudos to him for so many things. I just, uh, what's great to see is someone who was not angling for that type of acclaim mm -hmm. and wasn't chasing it and and now is, you know, is, is receiving that type of recognition and honor. Um deserves. And I think it's is 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 very is very well deserved. So um I think it's very well deserved for, for Dave. And um I just I I love the example that it sets. Um it's nice to be uh it's great to be uh recognized and applauded for what you do, but you also have to believe in what you're doing first. Whether people understand or not, you have to take that that chance i think that's the 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 the, the real measure of uh anything valuable is that somebody would do it whether they were being applauded for it or not it's just that level of earnestness that i find um much more energizing oh what's that <laughs> melody that was a nice, little bop. <laughs> nice little melody right it's just a little soundtrack to go with your wise words oh thank you <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I, what I really wanted to come here to say was thank you, uh, thank everybody who has been who has been supporting Blackstar up to this point. Uh, thank everybody who is 
supported No Fear of Time. Um, I think it's a beautiful project. It's definitely worth people's while. Um, I'm not a I'm I'm not the best uh, promotion person, so to speak. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not you're, you're, um, the, you're the Bill Burr of uh, promotion. I guess so. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I, I think that so much in in the space that we're in these days is built to kind of around this like kind of perpetual 24 hour marketing schedule. Mm-hmm. Right. That uh, you know, some people are, are you know they're just they can navigate that. They they have a a skill for it. But I I I do think that there are things that are worth putting yourself out there for and, and engaging with the with the public and the fact that you have this platform which is outstanding in and of itself. Oh, we appreciate and the you. fact that you know and the fact that, you know, we created this thing that I think is just really beautiful and is is reverberating in another type of way. Now you know you we there's a sound on uh on Black Star on the mm-hmm. No Fair Time record. There's a, a basically like the sound of the cosmos. And now mm-hmm. most recently, there are these images of deep space that are coming out, these beautiful uh, images of mm-hmm. what um, space looks like. And I think that it's interesting that now it's like we're, we're getting a visual of what we provided a sonic for uh, for what people are seeing now, you know, v- via these these uh, these new images, so I think there's just the, kind of these interesting um, this interesting thread uh, in, in in terms of the cosmos being referenced in the in you know just the yeah the larger you know conversation that, that, that people are having now, which is a really nice um, reminder and actually kind of zooming out like from Mm -hmm. a lot of the other noise and tension that we're all experiencing now so that made me certainly think about uh about no fear of time as well and uh some people may appreciate it some people may think you know they may be annoyed by the fact that it's not you know available at the you know usual marketplace marketplace providers blah 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 and I, you know, I can I can appreciate that. I can understand that. I think we we've made a, a very principled choice um, to hold back on that um, for now, and it's it's still accessible. I, I don't think that we're uh, asking people to do something that's like just completely untoward and making it like backbreaking for people to get access to it. Um, but I really, I just wanted to have like an appreciation moment for your work, the effort uh, of Mad Lab, Luminary, yeah. and everybody who has responded well to it. And like, it's, uh, it ain't over, you know, like No Fear of Time is really about um, transcending time uh, and being something that's a, a, a work of quality and value when you know as i've heard it said before and that's where i got that phrase from as a as a brother years ago said to me he said his grandfather said to him said things of quality have no fear of time yeah um so you spoke that, about that's the, the energy the space thing i wanted to talk about the space thing for a second because that was really interesting to me um this mm-hmm. idea you know if you, you tell the story about working with uh michelle gondry and you know, the way he dealt with his staff in terms of understanding how not to say no to the possibility of an idea. And mm-hmm. and and Black Star, when we first started Black Star, I've told the story before where you brought up the name and I'm like, yeah, Marcus Garvey, you you like, yeah, well that too, but I'm more thinking about the cosmos. So you was thinking about the cosmos from the beginning of the Black Star project. And so for the new album, you were like, yo, I want to get the sound of space. And put it through that throughout the album. And I'm like, okay, so I hit up the engineer and we started talking. The engineer, you know, he has an engineer, shout out to Federico. He has a very yes. engineer m- mentality, as he should. That's his job. And he's like, well, technically, from his research in science, space sound doesn't exist in space, is what he came back with me. And right. you pushed back on that in a very interesting way. Um, and we ended up getting the sound of space on the record. But I wanted you yeah. to break that that down. The going notion was that uh, space was 
without sound. There was, uh, you know, there was just this quiet void, you know, this noiseless void. Not only is a, a space not without sound, but it's full of vibration. I mean, which stands to reason, which is, you know, with, you know, that makes sense. That feels right. You know, it's like we, we live in a, in a world full of vibration, you know, we're making vibrations, even when we're silent, so to speak, you know, mm -hmm. um, there's a sunrise song that says music is silence too. And the silence is a, is a big part of music. Like without silence, you can't really make sound, you know, so right. silence is a, is a component of sound as well. So that was just really interesting to me. And I was like, we were referencing the cosmos. We represent, you know, uh, sound, music, speech is, is a vibration. And uh, we can kind of get to like zooming out to like the uh, like kind of like you know I guess like the mother load of vibrations so to speak. I I, I thought that would be interesting. Just to uh, I think people who are interested in music are probably well I'm probably speaking for myself. I'm interested in sound. Yeah, you know? I'm interested in sound and vibrations and how those how those sounds and vibrations are arranged and how um and the type of energy that they can create, um, and, we, and we've seen over over time through our history, is some of these vibrations are very high, and they create another type of sense of awareness or or or, 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 or feeling or state of being, and and some of that stuff is you know useful and positive, and some of it can be very you know dangerous. Uh, right. Uh, but saying that to say that this sound, uh, when I heard it really resonated with me, like li literally, and I was like, we have to feature the sound. And every time I hear it in the recording, uh, it's just like, wow, that's, it's, it's like, it's, you know, this marvel. It's, it's a piece of the actual universe in this, in this recording, which I think is special. Yeah, Madlib uh last project before he worked on the Black Star album was called Sound Ancestors. And we found ourselves mm. freestyling to a lot of that music. Um Yeah. And he did something in one of his videos that was really interesting. It was he was using the sound. Uh they do this this uh experiments where they like expose um beads of sand to the sounds and they the, Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. And they and they they uh, uh they form these uh geometric shapes. Yeah. So all of that type of stuff, like, you know, the geometry of sound, the uh, vibrations, all that uh, really interests me. Word so up. I wanted to feature it in the, in, in the recording. I'm glad we did. I'm glad you, you know, took that adventure with me. Word up. Right, and the more vibrations you have, the more someone that can't hear can actually still feel and enjoy you your music with you. can feel it, right, right. Yeah, yeah. It's like vibration is almost like kind of, past hearing in, a, in, in certain instances, yeah. So uh, after the Hollywood Bowl show, we had a conversation at the after party about why you don't go outside. Can we get into some of those reasons? <laughs> do, why well, I do go outside. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but I, I don't socialize, I guess, as much as some. I guess I socialize enough. I think but it goes I, back to that know, entertainment thing you were talking about. Because I feel like for you, for someone like you, even more so than myself, because I go through this too, but I feel like you go through it more because you did movies as well. People want you to behave as they expect entertainers to Your behave or, yeah. or celebrities to behave. I don't know what these ex expectations are based on. I mean, I, I can't, you know, I can't, um, <laughs> that's, that's a lot to unpack. People's expectations of like, right you know, celebrity or what 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 that what that word even means mm -hmm. i don't i don't um what that means in 2022 with the with the way and, and for like the years to follow I'm not, I'm not quite certain what that is or what um long lasting value that might have let me celebrate it for what or, mm -hmm. or and why um fame in and of itself is is something that um it's very curious. People who court fame are either not as well as they could be or they, they don't really know what they're 
chasing. Right. And uh, go ahead, Jasmine. You look like you have something you want to say. Oh, I'm okay. Because uh, Talib actually says this, and it resonates because it's just so true in how both of you move. Talib said they eat, they eat in regardless of what they feed in. And it's like, y'all are not eating what everyone else is eating. And the, exclusi- the exclusiveness, I feel, is what makes you so great because you don't care about what this person is feeling, this person is feeling. You're doing stuff that is true to you. And that's what makes people so drawn to what you have going on and why they want to know, you know what you're doing behind closed doors because they have no access. I mean— Possibly, there's. I mean, they, you know, it's certainly not a tactic. It's like, okay, we're gonna, I, I'm gonna make myself, or we're gonna make ourselves, like, you know, kind of like, you know, we're not playing hard to get, so right. to speak. Um, we're not coy. No, I'm not being coy. <laughs> I just uh, there's a certain level of engagement that's just not, not natural for me and what I'm doing. Other people can do it. It's suited to them, you know. Mm-hmm. They digest that differently. Certain people um, get energy from large groups and they, and they, they feel energy, energized by that mm-hmm. and, you know, it uh, it gives them another sort of buoyancy personally. Mm-hmm. Now, other people can find those uh, um, interactions to kind of be draining, you know. Yeah. Um, because it's a lot of people to have to, uh, you know, kind of pay attention to and you know and there there's a time and space for um for all of that but uh like the velocity that it happens at for it's just kind of this one size fits all sort of thing it's like if you're not doing it at this velocity mm-hmm. well then you're just not applying yourself mm-hmm. and i just i don't right. agree with that you know i don't think that that's necessary in order to um to connect to have your work connect with, with, with people or to connect with people or to do well uh mm-hmm. in in life not just in your work but i don't i don't i don't think i, I don't think that there's a one size fits all uh i don't believe in that approach for, yeah, for me anything, personally really. as i get older i'm i'm seeing that i agree with that philosophy a lot more i used to be the rising guy rise and grind guy you ask me what i'm doing i'm grinding i'm out here working mm-hmm. You know, I'm out here serving this capitalistic structure and making sure that the product is out there. And the more I get older- Pushing the production needle forward. (laughs) Yeah. The older I get, the more I want peace and the more I have to set boundaries. And and the less, used to be like, yo, Kwali, you you work with everybody. You be with everybody. And I was like, I know. And I'm I'm not really like that anymore. Yeah. I mean, it has its place, you know, to Mm -hmm. be connected. But, you know, you do need some solitude. Now, um, you're also someone who really has a love for fashion, and you had a relationship with Virgil Abloh, rest in peace. Yeah, uh, you brought it to my peace. attention that he had a Black Star sticker on his notebook, which the homie Donna Dragota went to the exhibit and took a picture of the notebook that Virgil had when he was 19 years old, and he had that original Black Star sticker on it. So can you break down his legacy and your relationship with him? Um, I was fortunate enough to work with Virgil. Um on a few occasions and um I really just admire his energy. I didn't I didn't get, to be honest, I didn't get what he was doing in the early parts of like his, you know, he started off with Pyrex and all that stuff. I was like, you know, it wasn't really for for me. It wasn't my thing. But I was keen to work with him and uh with off uh on off white from like 2016, 2017. I was like, this is a real unique opportunity, but this guy's like going for something. And throughout the arc of his his uh very dynamic career, you can start to see him just get, getting better, you know, mm-hmm. like getting getting better, you know, sharper, you know, more confident, more free in what he was doing. I just had so much respect for his vision for his for his exuberance for his, his enthusiasm, and I, I had no idea that that like what we were doing was that near to him, you know. Right. And I've never met that, him. Yeah, see, you would have loved him. You guys would have yeah. really got on, man. And, uh, and he's just a beautiful dude, man. He's just a really beautiful spirit. I miss Virgil, to be honest, man. I miss him a lot. So it was it was really comforting to see 
to see that iteration. I, I'd like to do something with that. You know, I think there's an interesting mm-hmm. piece of memorabilia merchandise that we can create featuring that. But thanks for bringing that up, man, because uh, the thing that struck me is that he would have loved the No Fear of Time and he, yes. you know, he, he he wasn't here to see it, but, you know, he's here in spirit for sure. Yeah. Um, you are a lot of our conversations revolve around fashion, you know, and and you're something that you're really passionate about. Um, where do you think that came from? Uh, I don't know. My mom was always very sharp, you know, my my grandmother, my, my uncles. You know, it's Brooklyn. It's this very... Um, Got to be sharp and fresh. Yeah, like being fresh is, you know, important. Um, <laughs> Word up. I think it's just, a, just an expression of beauty and identity, yes. ultimately, you know, for, 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 for me personally. And I think that Brooklyn is, is big on, like, you know, Certain certain standards of of beauty, certain aesthetics, you know. Mm-hmm. All right, so I've gotten this in my DMs for a minute, so I know that you guys are getting it. Can we just explain once for all why Luminary? Why did you guys decide to put Black Star bet- behind specifically Luminary? No, what, 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 I I I let Quali take that one first. <laughs> well, I I get the uh, comments as well, people. I think what Yastin spoke to earlier alludes to some of this. People feel entitled. People feel like they are owed something. You have a generation mm-hmm. of people who grew up receiving music for free on the internet. And the, the unfair part about it is that it's not the fault of the consumer that they have been grown used to receiving music for free. But the onus is still on the artist to try to figure out how to get paid for our music. And that's something that I, that I wear, and I'm okay with that. If you're a Black Star fan... And in the last 20 years, you bought the Black Star vinyl or you bought it on iTunes. Um, you paid Universal. You didn't pay right. Black Star. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So people show up and claim to be, I'm trying mm-hmm. to be careful with my words here because I don't want to offend actual fans, right? But people show up and claim to be fans and they say, well, you know, I bought this album and they feel like, well, you owe me the, with the language in which they talk about it. Oh, y'all made us wait 24 years. Well, hold on. We didn't make you do anything. You know, me as a fan mm-hmm. of Black Star, I am grateful for what Black Star has given me. And so if it took 24 years, I'm fine with that. I've spoken about this in terms of uh, Miss Hill, in terms of Dr. Dre, in terms of uh, D'Angelo, in terms of Sade. I feel like what they've given me, I feel like I still owe them bread for what they've given mm. me. You know what I'm saying? So the idea that somehow I'm owed something from these artists, um, it's just, it's, it's very hard for me to wrap my he- head around. And I follow Yasin's lead. I mean, we've talked about this. If it was up to me, that album might have been out on Spotify like five years ago. There was deals on the table. There was a lot of things that we turned down, a lot of situations that we turned down so that we could have more control and so that we could get paid. Um, and I just feel like the situation with Luminary is a very fair situation in terms of uh, what you're actually getting for, for your for your book. I feel like it's a, you're artists. getting a lot. Sure. Yeah, for sure. It's, and you're not only getting access to us uh, as, a, as, as a collective creatively with music, but you get you access everything else that's on our platform, mm-hmm. including the Midnight Miracle. So mm-hmm. it's basically for what it might cost to see us perform at a, a live at a concert, mm-hmm. you're getting the album, you're getting access to all of the work that we've done with The Miracle, which is like a whole other universe of flyness, in my opinion, that mm-hmm. is worth anybody's attention, in my opinion. And, and we're consolidating the audience, and we're doing so because, as John Henry Clark said, and I'm, I'm mm-hmm. paraphrasing, the black man has something, has created something, that the world has, has, has figured out that they, that they can't produce on their own, that they won't do without, and that they won't pay for. So much of what I've experienced in what our experience in this country has been, has been about the exploitation of our human value. Mm-hmm. You know? And if people are more comfortable paying the intermediaries, 
to get access to us than paying us in a way that doesn't disenfranchise us because it's more convenient for them or they're just in the habit of accessing the work of a predominantly black labor base. Mm -hmm. Right? When you talk about hip hop, you know, the elephant in the room is that hip hop is a synonym for black men. Mm. Because predominantly the, the, the talent base is black men. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, you know, and this is not disparaging the work of the it many. Is, I mean, Queen Latifah, mm -hmm. Lauren Hill, we go on and on and on. But predominantly for the last 25, 30 years, it has been predominantly black men from the United States of America, from continental United States of America, born between the years of 1967 and 1994. That's a very defined space. And, yeah, um, yeah it's all of this scrutiny and... and um, uh, just shenanigans. Uh, 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 whenever it's something that we that, that we're central to, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, in a lot of places of the world, you know, labor is misused, uh, exploited, misappropriated. So, you know, we're not unique in in that regard. We I mean, we're not terminally unique in that regard. All I can do is speak for me, and without you know making somebody feel like I'm looking down on them, or you know wagging a, a, a some sort of self righteous finger. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just not. I'm not rocking like that, you know. I right. I in, in my uh, in my gut that doesn't sit well. No, that don't sit well. I I can't just mm -hmm. resolve it. And trust me, like I'm keen to like make peace and resolve and have everything like I'm you know I I I I don't look forward to confrontations <laughs> you know I'm not, I'm not I'm not I you know, I don't have I'm not trying to be the avenging angel of anything but when you know uh, th these works if you take the music away right mm -hmm. if you take the music away and you just have the voice of any poet any MC, it's their ideas, it's their life experience, it's it's everything that they've lived up until that point. Well, that has to be valued, and that value has to be protected, particularly if it's making other institutions and communities rich beyond their wildest dreams. Mm -hmm. I mean, how is it that it makes the institution rich that's done nothing? Yeah, but well, apart right. from cre create a fence around the uh, the the work of 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 of, of those artists. people, which is which is not easy work to do. I mean, if you real, if you anybody that's good at anything that they're doing, or, or or good enough to do it for as long as we've been doing it, has had to make some serious sacrifices and investments in preserving and and uh, preserving their talent and growing Real their talent. Sacrifices. Real sacrifices uh, mm -hmm. of time, of of energy, of effort. You know, family. Uh, you know, uh, spending time away. The time that you need to 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 grow at this means that it's time that you you're not socializing or <laughs> with with friends or right. going out to do this or this the other thing. It's time that you're taking away to um to build your craft and that that takes time. I think that people just have a entertain a, a relationship with entertainment and access to entertainment and the way that people are responding is like you're taking away their drug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you're interrupting the 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 delivery system for their drug of choice, which is entertainment. Mm -hmm. And so like, well let's just say this. You've miscast us as entertainers, right? Mm -hmm. That's number one. And two, well, your entertainment addiction is not my responsibility. Mm. It's not my Say responsibility to, to service you, your jug of choice, if it's entertainment. And in that regard, you have... You you're spoiled for choices in terms of providers for that entertainment drug. You you, you right, you're yeah. not you know you're not you're not in the in the lurch for people who want right. to you know fulfill your entertainment is. We're yeah. not here to do that. Well, we're talking about um, trust as well, I think, and I wanted to get your take on this because we're asking and expecting 
to a degree, the people who claim to be fans or claim to be supporters to trust right. us that if we say that this is the way in which we want to operate, this is the way that works best for us. Because people will right. say to me, well, no, that can't possibly be the best way for you to do it. Uh, when you talked about intermediaries, people look at Luminary as an intermediary and without getting it, without, without doing a commercial for Luminary and also without getting into the metrics and the rudiments of our specific deal point or whatever, because that's nobody's business. But if we as Black Star say, the best way to support us is to come to Luminary, then if you're a fan, you should trust that. If anybody, if an artist that I support is mm -hmm. saying, it's, and says very plainly, you know, mm -hmm. to, 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 to me as an audience member mm -hmm. of theirs, says, listen, I got new works and I'm putting it out this way because so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so and, -so and, -so and, -so and, and kind of just lays it out very plainly as we have, well, mm -hmm. then I'm saying, okay, it's, it's not like a, it's not like a, you know, a, a drive through the, the rally, the Dakar rally for you to do this. I'm not, we're not asking you to walk through the desert. <laughs> <laughs> right to get access to the, to to this thing, and so I, I just think that um, right and people's habits are, or whatever they are, but it's been a it's been a very informative journey in seeing the attitudes, mm -hmm. you know, because people say one thing, but their response and their attitudes really reveal what they value, right? Yeah. You know, and. Um, I, I think it's it's good to kind of separate the wheat from the chaff, so to speak. It's like, okay, well, then you know who's really riding with you and you know who's like caught up on some other sort of conventions or habits or expectations that they themselves might not even realize are, are, have been manufactured in, into mm -hmm. them, you know, that, they, right. that, that they've been conditioned to, 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 think, to, to think this way. And... That's that's fine, but it's also it's not appropriate or necessary for for any individual to just conform to that because it's a prevailing notion. Because there's so much in any society that at a time is a prevailing notion, and then you look ten or twenty years down the trajectory of history and be like, that was terrible. P case mm. in point. Um, in 1984, I saw an ad not long ago for uh, the Marathon 1000 cigarette, which was the <laughs> which was the official cigarette of the 1984 Olympics. Wow! There was yeah, a we know cigarette. about the history of of cigarettes with advertising. You know, oh, TV cigarettes was with almost advertising. Like invented to advertise cigarettes. So, yeah, you know, uh, so but there was a, there was a cigarette for the Olympics called the Marathon One Thousand, and at the time, the prevailing notion was like no problem. And you, can you imagine a cigarette <laughs> company trying That's to sponsor crazy. any <laughs> athletic events in the, not just in America but in the Western world in at this period. point? You know, I mean, they still get away with a lot of that in you know certain parts of Asia and Africa and, mm -hmm. and stuff like, that. but. You know, the prevailing notion was at the time that that was fine. The prevailing notion, and you know, in, in societies was like, you know, it's no problem, you know, buying and selling people uh, on the auction block and, you know, in broad daylight, yeah. you know, bring your family. Um, hmm. Let's have a we can go down. Yeah, we can go. We can go down the list of like prevailing notions that have not aged well in history because they were they were objectionable to begin with but they were they were widely accepted and mm -hmm. employed so this notion is just because everybody's doing it mm -hmm. um is, is that it that it's a that it's one a suitable uh response or action for you as an individual yeah, yeah everybody has to you know take the action that is best suited for them and i think that that's what i really respect about what we've done, not only creatively, but in in terms of how the 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 work is getting delivered, is that we 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 we're asserting that like no, this is not you you don't just get it the way that you want to get it based on these prevailing notions and conventions. You're gonna mm -hmm. you're gonna get it and get access to it in a way that we don't get uh uh destroyed mm -hmm. 
or but. or com- completely compromised in, in doing so. It's like, yeah, you know, we wanted to get out there to as many people as possible, but not at any cost. You know, not what I'm at saying? any like, cost. That's know. exactly it. No. no. A couple of things. Number one, you get Midnight Miracle. You get uh, No Fear of Time. But you also get the world's best podcast. You Let's get not forget about people's party, people's that's party right. out here. So it's like, yes. why, so go why, ahead as a luminary why, without doing a commercial. Uh, yeah, but, but, but uh, I, mean, I mean, why wouldn't we do it? We have, mm-hmm. we have... We have titles and properties on this platform, you know. Mm-hmm. One of the greatest artists in the English language in, in the world is our partner. So why wouldn't we why wouldn't we do it? You know, why wouldn't right, yeah. we support our own efforts if we and especially we, we, we like working with the the crew at Luminary. We appreciate the vision. We appreciate what they're trying to do in theory and in practice. So, you know, it was is is suitable for us. Um, and I think that, uh, as, as, uh, for whatever, you know, objections that, 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 that people have, which are not, and uh, for as many people as may, you know, say, oh, I don't like it, you know, put it on, you know, wherever that I can get to it easier. There's just as many people Or my favorite, well, I'll just bootleg it. You know, and the other thing is like, I will just bootleg it is kind of like, Okay, well, thank you for letting us know right. that you're not somebody that really cares about art That's or right. the people that make it. You know, you're saying that I have an entertainment addiction. Yes, and I have an entertainment entitlement, and I feel like I should That's be able to get whatever yes. I, whatever I want, how I want it, regardless of how you may be negatively affected by that. Which mm-hmm. I and you know what I mean, and Dave said that it, the, the, whatever the legislations that happen, you know, in the the Supreme Court of this and this and that is that that has impact too. But mm-hmm. the way that we treat each other as people, as a society, as you know, neighbors, mm-hmm. has more positive potential than than anything. You know, if we treated each other better, a lot of this stuff would just you know, fall by the wayside. But when people take that kind of cold, bureaucratic uh, attitude out into like just the general public, when well, mm-hmm. then you can't complain about the corporations. You can't complain right. about the the institutions that exploit people because you take that same attitude and inject it into like the most intimate exchanges that human beings have around their labor, around... Uh, how you speak to them about how you you know how you establish and protect value just on the on, on a one to one level. So you can't mm-hmm. complain about the government, you know, uh, you know, putting the screws to you when you put the screws to your friends and neighbors and the people that you claim to respect and support. Mm-hmm. And you you can't right. expect any um, um, any worthwhile change. Mm-hmm. Uh, to to come about if if you're in, if you're in essence in your own personal policy, mm-hmm. like a, a, a you know a, a, a echo chamber of that type of attitude. Absolutely. Honestly, people should be applauding you guys and thanking you because everyone's preaching buy black support small businesses, and it's like you guys have found a way to get paid for your work, and that's and that's what everyone should do, be doing because the more people that are going to the corporations, the harder it's going to be for people to get paid what they should be getting paid for their talents. Yeah, I mean, it's just like you know, if people talk about a living wage, if people talk about um, just equity and mm-hmm. fairness. And and human endeavor, you can't have you know. I don't think that anybody's tolerate just corporations uh, making billions and trillions uh, off of the off, off of the labor of a- a- anybody mm-hmm. um, without you know without some real equity or oversight. And some people just get discouraged and they say, well, you know, that's just the way it is. You know, that's being complicit, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I, 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 I think so, you know. Mm-hmm. I just don't think that that's the appropriate attitude. I mean, not not for me. Um, yeah. And I, 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 I don't think that I'm isolated in that regard either. I think that there's always uh, that spirit that 
will be present in in human affairs. Yeah. So, so, some some group of people uh that are always like, nah, son, we not, you know. Mm -hmm. Some group of people in the Middle Ages that were like, you know, I've heard about books and I'm I wanna read one. <laughs> 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 I'm Man. trying to get a book, son. I know they said they outlawed, but right? Don't you like we? What's in these books? Why they don't want us to have them? And and thank God right. for these people, you know, mm -hmm. because if, if everybody just kind of just shrugged their shoulders and just kind of went for it, you know, we need rule where breakers. would we be? Where would we be if the people living in Montgomery was just like went for it, you know? Yeah. Our ancestors, you know, I mean, and, and they did not have the agency that we have in these days mm -hmm. and times. And they got so much more done. In fact, without their efforts, we we not we're not able to have this these type of exchanges or conversations or be in the positions that we are. So for me, there's 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 a lot in it, you know, more than just like you know, people get cynical, like, well, it's all about money for you. Well, you know, you get paid for doing something as well. And you mm -hmm. want to be paid fairly for what you do, too. So we work in one space and you work in another. And if somebody start taking too much out of your paycheck, you're going to, you know, you're going to be, That's you right. may very exactly. well be out there on the picket line or and trying to find a new gig or do something different. So, yeah. we, you know, we're no, we're no different in, in, in that regard. And, um, and I guarantee if we start questioning the ethics of your boss... Well, that becomes right. a whole different, interesting conversation. Uh, right, and we're, and we're not doing that. We're not even trying to peer. We know we're right. not. We're not <laughs> auditing your life, you right? Know? Or your or your business practices. We're just saying, like, you know, if you want to have access to us, it's it's a, it's a you can get it at this one place. which kind of makes it easier, you know. What I'm saying uh, it's easier uh, if you if you care about the art in the way that you claim to care about the art. Right. And and before I get into a whole thing, because I got, you know, Robert Glass was in town, so I'm going to try to catch him in a little bit. But oh, yeah. I really, I'm first of all, I want to say thank you for all of the beautiful work that you have done and that you continue to do. And uh, thank you for opening up and sharing this platform with me and so many others. Thank you for all of these years of beautiful experience with black star oh, thank all you. of the hills and valleys man it's, it's it's worth it i'm happy to be on this adventure with you and i really just wanted to take this time to say thank you it's a, it's a black star appreciation post on a yes. platform that you oh. created appearing on a on, on another platform that we have real equity in as partners and that we have a real interest in and um you know this you know i'm just giving some flowers to my family and, and 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 community and saying thank you and thank you again and for everybody that's been on this journey with us and uh to people who, who are hearing this don't be discouraged uh to to live out your dream uh you know some days i'm more encouraged than i in other days i'm not so encouraged but i just keep one foot in front of the other and uh it's a shout out to all of the big dreamers a shout out to the never quitters um yes a, a, a shout out to 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 everybody that's interested in truth and beauty everywhere in the world. Uh, no fear of time is for you, and e e even the haters, you need it too. As much as you <laughs> as as much as you may try to resist it, there's some beauty in it for for you too. And and let me say let me say let me say this. Uh, do. Anthony Anthony Fontana, <laughs> let's just, it's fine. You don't have to <laughs> like what I do. And uh, you, you said it was rushed. So how you gonna rush something that you waited 25 years to do? I don't understand that. You don't understand the album. I don't understand your review. I don't understand your <laughs> I don't understand your shirt. It's not for but you, anyway. <laughs> Everything but, but is not you for know everybody. What? You know what? You know what? What I found most interesting is that he did not even mention the sound of the universe that was mm -hmm. in there. And that's the resonance of that is almost like a quality in and of itself. You know, you had like people mm -hmm. like Pythagoras, Bach, mm -hmm. they, were, they were trying to approach the music of the spheres. And now we have like actual physical evidence of it. And he didn't mention it at all. And it's no disrespect to anybody. Like, I don't I don't try right. to curry favor with, you know, you like it, you love it. That's, it's totally, you hate it. That's all legal. But when people don't like it based on some expectations that they have or some sort of cultural biases, um, 
I I reject that, and to be honest, I kind of bristle at it. Not because it's like I need you to, I need to be validated or approved by these people, but because the idea of identity as it relates mm-hmm. to our communities specifically is such a sensitive issue. So much of how we are scrutinized or, or, or dealt with in society is based on other people's expectations of how we are supposed to behave. Yeah, and their I mean, standards of conduct and beauty being hoisted on us. And, and, and so very often, more often than not, those standards being poisonous for us. You know, they yeah. just, if we if we if we adhere to those standards, something that we need about ourselves uh, gets destroyed or compromised. And I'm not willing to give that up for nothing no 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 bag of money no no rounds of applause no pats on the back because it's a it's a high price for a useless reward this is if if Mm. you could even call it a, a reward what they give you in exchange is is far far less valuable than what you've given them so keep your keep keep what you You know, give what you can, but keep what you need. And you need you. I need me. You need you. We need ourselves. We need each other. So I'm not just willing to just, you know, toss that into the, you know, the gladiator arena for the roar of the crowd. You know, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll do something else. Well, you know, music taste is subjective, right? And so people have the right to criticize and feel how they want to feel. And and not everything is for everybody. But my issue with some of these type of reviews is the dishonesty. And it Pitchfork mm-hmm. wrote a review about an album I did with Knife Wonder back in the day. The review came out the day after the album came out. So it's like mm-hmm. this piece of work that we spent the time, you listened to it all night and now you have a review of it. And in the review, they had certain facts wrong, right? So they had they didn't right. have the right names of the producers. And it's clearly because you rush in to get it out for the clicks and the views. We come from the era where we would have to give the source or the vibe or whatever the album six months ahead of time so that it could be reviewed for Christmas time. You know what I'm saying? Right, and so right, now you right. have these people sitting around on the internet wanting to review music. If you are putting out a review for an album that came out yesterday, I can't trust you. You haven't you said that. I mean, everybody's in love with everybody's in love with their opinion these days and there's you know they've made a cottage industry out of having an opinion. Yeah. Um, which is okay. That's just the you know the the going notion of the day. Uh, it may it may mm-hmm. or may not be that tomorrow. Um, well, what uh, I did for Pitchfork, I wrote a I wrote a review of their review. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes I don't even really want to respond because you know, it's like Erica said, I'm an artist. I'm sensitive about my my you know uh-huh. my thing, but I'm not like brittle. You know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. I've had harsher things said about me. Uh, by you know more qualified parties. Um, there you go. But it's not about whether you like it or not. It's like, well, then what authority do you have to comment about anything that any of us are doing in this space? Like, you know, what is your real interest? Is it are you just interested in entertainment, or do you have, you know, like a real understanding of the context that 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 uh, that, uh, that we create in as? As a group, and we are mm-hmm. we are a unique group. Hip hop is very unique, you know. Uh, there's yeah. nothing that sounds like that sonically. There's you know, it's a very unique arts movement. So people uh, who critique it, you know, uh, just from kind of like a you know pop entertainment standards, are missing some very important nuances about what this is and what what it really means, you know, because. To quote my brother Kamal Faree, rap is not pop. If you call it that, calling that then stop. stop you and know? to quote you from when you was on the show, you said, if you really truly love art, at some point you were going to make it. You know, and try to these, make it. You know? Yeah, a lot of these critics yeah, uh, they do, don't. don't make don't create anything. But God, but God bless them. You know, it's like yeah. they, they you know, they all they all play their part. We playing our part and they and they playing their part. I'm saying, you know, and the and, album you know, has been critically acclaimed too. Let's not let's not gloss over that. Oh side yeah, too. listen, listen. <laughs> We've never been whack, you know. Right. So that's not the you know. I if it wasn't a work that B and you could stand by in terms of quality, mm-hmm. it feel good. We wouldn't have put it out. You know, that's there's right. no there's no rush. We not like you know compelled by anything to just put something out to be put out. Obviously not. You know? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, obviously not, right? You know, I feel like Black Star is the one crew that you could really, really trust. Like, they not, you know, we're not... They're taking their time. Clout, ch- clout chasing, uh, you know, paper chasing, uh, uh, none of that. It's like we, you know, we, we approaching them with some sincerity. But thank you and thank you again. You were saying uh, Big U was a name that you could trust back then. So that's been your whole yeah. thing. It's like, I'm trying to give you, go back to that trust thing. But I wanted yeah. to just... um. Thank you for your time and energy. Thank you for making that call. Thank y'all, um, man. And thank it's going to be good for, to see you. For, for putting up with my shenanigans. And I'm I'm trying to grow as a person, y'all. I pray for One me. more question. I'm praying for myself, too. I got one more question. You and I have had internal conversations about releasing more Black Star music. And yes. I know that you've said that you've retired, but that's retirement from the industry. That's not re- obviously retirement from being a human being or an artist. So are you comfortable at this point talking about possibly or potentially where people could hear or what we might be doing with Black Star or what you might be doing with solo Yasin Bey work. Oh yeah, I mean there's more there's more coming, you know. Uh mm-hmm. we just want to make sure that the you know we're working out the nuances of of delivery to avoid it being m- miscast as a disposable entertainment product available at, you know, all of the you know, local uh vending Right. Machines, so to speak. Um, and for people who want to engage in that experience, that's that's for them, but that's not for us. So uh stay tuned, you know. The 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 story and the saga continues. We we happy yes. to be here, we're happy to have your support. And uh thank you and thank you again, brother. Thank you all. Thank you. We love you, we appreciate you. Love you thank too, you for- man. Joining us on the People's Party, ladies and gentlemen. Always, party. man. Thank you for having. I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy. There's a People's Party to be to be to be a part of, man. Thank you yes, for indeed. doing this. Thank you all, man. Love. Yes, I'll see you y'all. soon, Peace. brother. I'm looking forward, man. Peace. Yes, enjoy the show tonight. Thank you, man.